And we're going live yeah. from the... We are live. And it's good that we're going live from the thing. Okay, it's trying. And live video, yeah. 51. There we go. Okay, we should be back, people. Dragonfly is now live. I think we're back. Is anybody with us? That sounds much clearer. Are we are we back with the event? Or have we just gone live? It's just live on the page send it was before. The event is just a notifier, I think, to that okay. page. So I think it's We've got better. Four, six. Hello, 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 hello. Better so far, Esther says that's brilliant. Yay! Oh okay, we Thank just you. took one link out of the chain. One link too many. We've that's pressed it so we've got te <laughs> tech support from Tice, that's funny. What did he that's say? Sorry, just all the things that we're doing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you, Tice. That yeah. seems to be a bit better. Thank you. I've just refreshed here as well. Yeah. That's what you also swapped seats. No, we didn't. Maybe it's just no. mirrored us this yeah, time. I think, <laughs> I think that, yeah, oh, we would, we would. Screen sharing Zoom last time, so oh, it would have it would have spurned, yeah. mirrored, yeah, yeah. Okay, so David Meadows, you also sort of okay, and um, you've read that one, and I moved the Christmas straight. straight yeah. yeah, we did all that in. We the did all of that. Yeah, we were out of action. Just we're a back. little bit of dragonfly magic, yeah. of course. So there was a question. There was a question. Was there a question in the feed? Was there a question in the feed? Let's have a look. Did you... Ah, okay. Phil Atwell is asking us. Hello again, Phil. Did you use to cover Rhiannon in your live set? And would you consider a covers album? And if so, if so what songs would you choose? Oh, so many. This is a great question. Um, I don't think... Have I done Rhiannon with... I've uh, definitely done it with... Who have I... Uh, have we done Rihanna? <laughs> I've definitely done Rihanna with Martin Ledger, but was it not with you as well? No. Don't think or so. Or was it with Chris and you? No? Don't think no. so. Okay, so not together. So that would be a good one to do. Love Rihanna, obviously. Massive, massive Fleetwood with Matt. Stevie Nicks fans. Um, what else would go on there? Ooh, we'd probably have to get some like GT Turbo in. Boss K and Dan to do uh, Stop Dragging My Heart Around, something like that. Yeah. Uh, as well. Andy, what would you like to put on there if we did a covers album? This is a great question. It is a good yeah. question. Yeah, I don't know why I'm, I'm immediately draw, thinking of the stuff that I already do with other people that's covers. We no, do have our own that stuff. Out, yeah. I yeah. yeah. I just think what, what I was thinking think? the other day. Um, because getting all seasonal and the Christmas trees up, um, super early, same as last year, like bringing the light. And um, I think it was one of the boys mentioned Jethro Tull were all over TikTok with Solstice. And I said, ah, well, yeah, they're huge in America. So if these are American, well, they're huge anyway, but <clears throat> particularly, um, you know, uh, but anyway, yeah, the solstice, um, ring yeah, solstice, solstice bells. ring out solstice bells. I thought how lovely that might be. We had a go at it in mostly autumn, didn't we? Did um, we? we did, I don't think we ever got around to gigging it. I think we messed about with it in rehearsal once. But no, what I was going to say about the stuff that I do with other people is I sing a few songs by Sam Lee um, with other people, and there are loads more. And his stuff, for some reason, I, I just really enjoy singing that. Um, he collects old, old folk songs. Nice. And, there, and there's some really lovely stories. The Blackbird is a famous one, which I recently heard Sarah Dean doing a really different version of. Oh, nice. I bet well. she did all the Blackbird noises as well. Yeah, so something probably, I'd like to include something by Sam Lee because he's collected some brilliant songs. Nice. Yeah. Um, let's, let's, let's keep pondering that and then we'll come back to you, Phil, <laughs> as, we, uh, as we progress, if we get some more song. Uh, ideas. Um, I'll tell you what, one, one time we did do, 
really, really, really um, beautiful artist uh, who I'm a really big fan of, and it's slightly different, sort of more um, devotional music. But we did a chanting event once, didn't we, mm. at the Stables Yoga uh, Centre in York, and we, we did a cover by Krishna Das of uh, Mere Guru Dev, and it's just such an amazing, beautiful melody. And we did a really nice yeah, version of that nice. with flute and um, I think there's some percussion in there as well. So. Yeah. Potentially another one. Yeah, nice. Um, and they've always fancied <coughs> a crack at the ship song by Mick Cave. Amanda Palmer does an amazing cover of that. Ah. I've always fancied a little go yeah, at that. Mick Cave song would be really good. Yeah. Now, don't think in here um, there are any other questions. So I'm going to pop back to the current feed to do a quick refresh. I do believe I've just seen Sarah Lily. Hey, hello, Sarah. Hello. How are you? Little SD, Sarah Eaton has joined the chat. Hello. Hello. Yes, what? Tom Petty, Tice, yeah, I thought you might like that one. Um, Heather sometimes sang the end of the end of Evergreen. Oh, yes, well done, Dave. Was that yeah, that's this one then? No, it was definitely an Oh, 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 yeah. Was it in the end of Evergreen? Well done, David. That's yeah. like a real <laughs> yeah. blast from the past mm. there. So lovely of you guys. There's lots of comments in it. It's doing that thing where it's hiding. It's saying we've got nine comments, but I can only see four. So I might just have a little look at the comments. On my seat, other comments? Uh, no, there isn't. Oh, there isn't this. A, let's make this bigger. Like one. See. Make it big. So, um, where do we see? Choppy video here too. Oh, still. Oh, is that the old one? Hang on a minute. Why isn't the current one there? Definitely hang out. <coughs> Bear with us, people. Okay. Let's see if it will let me have all the comments here. Yes, yeah, try that. We can see yeah. those. Can you see those? And on the screen? Okay. Yes, yeah. Brilliant. So, what we'll do is we will go to um, our questions that we had from Jenny Williams. Thank you, Jenny, for sending us so many lovely questions. Connection's still dodgy. Oh, sorry, Phil. Oh, no. I'll, st I'll stop messing about with the computer and everything. Okay, well, um, is it bearable or should somebody we? let us know if it's uh, worth continuing or whether we need yeah. some serious toolkit out? We should maybe next time do it on Zoom and get everybody in the chat with us and then fire it out to Facebook separately and then we know that it's, um, you know, yeah, get everybody, nice yeah, share a Zoom link. Who'd be up for that if next time we did this we actually did it on Zoom? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, thanks Sarah, the video keeps pausing. Oh, what a shame. Okay, well, whether we should crack on or not, or is it just too frustrating for you guys? Are we, oh, oh, it's better now, in Greece, that's, that's, that bodes well. Thank you, Irene. Um, I hope that's how your name is pronounced. Um, okay, so we'll, we shall carry on. So one question we have here is... Um, <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> the dragonflies were a bit same. Better than it was. Okay, that's brilliant. Hey, eating, Craig. <laughs> oh, bless you. All right, Thanks for dropping in. Say yeah. hi, Craig. Brilliant. Enjoy your evening and live band, whoever that is that you're going to see. Have fun. Uh, it's better than it was. Okay, that's good. Okay, so Jennifer is asking us, as regards the creative process of songwriting, have there been times when you have felt that writer's block, so often referred to, oh, have you ever felt that writer's block so often referred to, and what do you find most helpful when this occurs? Do you want to go first on that? Don't seem to lose any just cap. Uh, keeps pausing and then you catch up. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Yeah, writer's block. I don't... 
I think I've said this before in interviews, but I don't have a writing routine. So I've not really had a situation where I've sat down to write something and it's not been there. My writing tends to be more, I've got an idea, so I'll sit down and start it. I might have block in continuing with it or making something of it, but that's the best thing about collaboration is that if you're stuck with something, you can bring it, which is exactly what web was. It's like, I've got this, but I don't know what to do with it. I guess that's the nearest I've had to writer's block. And because I'm not a solo artist, I have the benefit of then being able to take that to Heather and say, what can you do with this? So I suppose that's my... Which is, yeah, usually a, a wonderful way of collaborating as well, mm. isn't it? And I think with this um, new album, um, we've done that both way around, both mm. ways around. Um, for instance, with this song, Gulls, mm. I had written the music and the choruses for that um, but there were no verses coming mm, which is the same as web it's like a reverse mm. web isn't reverse it? web we said this yeah. last time yeah. yeah I remember that um, yeah sorry for repeating yeah. that <laughs> hello David Pagan Nomad uh, thought it was my connection as loud no I think it seems like other people are uh, experiencing okay. it this end we think thank you for, for sticking yeah. with us we will get it sorted for next time if you please check in with us next time yeah this we'll is the out. second we do have a few more of these planned uh, and we'll just you know we'll keep we'll keep going yeah. but uh, each time we do we sort of spot in new gremlins so uh, thank you for your patience and being with us and for teaching us what we need to do to make it better so thank you um yes yeah, so me, me and writer's block <laughs> me and writer's block yes uh sadly i do suffer from it a lot and um i have done always uh, over the years and it's sort of you know um I think for me, as my sort of um, yoga and meditation has stabilised over the years, that has helped no end. Um, and sort of just recognising that, that, you know, I, I don't suppose we've never been signed to a massive record company who sort of takes care of all that stuff that you don't need to be taken away from your writer's hat. Um, for um, so the, a lot of the stuff that I do, you know, being a solo artist predominantly nowadays, is a lot of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes, you know, production and the admin, the you know, running the business in general. So there has to be allocated times when you need to be in the creative um, mode. So I, th I think for me, it's just about getting better at recognizing what the things are that you need to do. Um, in order to get yourself in that state of mind and like I said my yoga practice um, is one good thing getting out in nature um, and I suppose the more disciplined you are with your general routine you know, like around the house because one terrible thing that often occurs and we've laughed a lot about it over the years is the self-sabotage that comes in and um, you're just about to sit down because you've got this amazing idea bubbling, you know, the guitar, the piano is calling, and suddenly you think, oh, it's been a while since I've dusted those shelves. And so, you know, the back of your mind, there's always like the self saboteur sitting there waiting mm. to tell you that there are far better things for you to be doing right now than sitting there writing that song. Mm. So, uh, yeah, it, it's just about, you know, I, I do think it takes a while um, to, you know, mature into yourself and your way of working and you know you have to go through the process of elimination of lots of different styles but and it keeps changing you know you've got to be flexible mm. with yourself haven't you because which is we're kind of, constantly changing and that's we? kind of the answer to Wes's question which um has just slipped off the screen now because we've got the screen huge but um it was do we write together or separately and how do we write and i think that there isn't one set way of doing it is there no no, and I think that aids the creative process in itself is to that flexibility to allow that into every area of what you do and, and not not be so set in your ways that you're missing other potential ways of doing something. Mm -hmm. Again, another example I can think of is um, the last track on uh, Sirens, Diamond Soul. Um, it it was all sort of written and the chorus was great and it was just something about the guitar groove that was really fucking me and, and it was just grating on me, it wasn't quite right 
And one day, I think you came over and I just said, this is not, I don't know what to do. It's not the tempo, it's not the melody, it's nothing. And I said, can you just play it, Angie, and I will not play the guitar, and let's just see what happens. And then, just intuitively, Angie came up with this beautiful way of playing it and, you know, lots of space between the notes and sort of picked up on slightly different, more off-time rhythm behind it and then... I was still bothered about the the melody of the chorus, so you started singing it. You know, I asked you to sing it mm. so that it would completely get Angela's interpretation of it going on. And um, yeah, that that whole song kind of evolved in a completely different way. Mm. So you know, and, it, and in that mm. respect, it became a co-write then, which is mm. obviously what it needed to be. Mm. So um, oh, that's a lovely comment, Graham Gale. Yeah, uh, really Red, we, we've yeah, we've been stunned by. You know, the, the um, red roses on, on the blue wall shouldn't textbook work at all, but they really do. And um, for that reason, I keep buying red roses. <laughs> um, yeah, they, thank you. It was your suggestion, wasn't it? Let's do it here and, and let's I do just, it against I, that red wall. I like uh, the, blue video, wall. the little video that um, of us signing the other day. Yes. I thought it, it looked really striking, so um, I thought we should do this from here. Yes, thankfully we had um, Jake who was on a training day from school and he took some yeah. pictures and boomerangs for us yeah. for, to play with after. And uh, whoever wasn't here on the beginning of the first video, we were showing off these beautiful um, postcards and prints that we have done and we've been scribbling away and signing these. Um, and we were talking about our lovely team of uh, people we've had with us on this um, album who help us not to have to do all of those other bits and pieces entirely. Um, Howard Rankin has made these beautiful um, images, including the front cover as well, which we, we were describing in particular detail, that it's a multiple exposure. Um, Howard's website is um, beautiful as well, uh, howardrankin.com. Um, and uh, I... He's so humble, I completely accidentally stumbled upon that. I just thought, oh, I wonder if Howard's got a website. And sure enough, he has all his beautiful work on there. And so if you want to check out more of Howard's work, you can you can see uh, howardrankin.com. And um, Roger Newport has helped us put the whole artwork booklet together as well, including um, the putting the, the fonts and the album title on the... Uh, Howard's beautiful artwork as well. So, thank you to Howie and Roger and to Nick for mixing and master uh, mixing the album, mm. Nick Bryan, and to Pete uh, Mayer who has mastered the album. Mm. So, um, and you guys who have helped us no end at, at um, actually shifting. Hello, Tony White. Um, yeah, at shifting some copies. Thank you so much for being with us on this journey. Hello, TJ uh, and Tony. Given you have known each other for years, do you have that sixth sense when you are writing, recording and performing? It's more when we're about to ring each other. <laughs> the other one will text or ring and say, oh, I'm just thinking about that. Um, what do you think about that, Angie? Yeah, I think so. I think it's probably developed more over the recording sessions of Sirens. Yeah. It's like you kind of... If you say, for example, you were helping me record some vocals, I'd kind of know when you were happy with it <laughs> before you'd said anything. Um, and because you kind of, I don't know, I know what you're looking for. And, um, you know, especially in the backing vocal to a, one of your lead vocals, I think the years of doing that together maybe have developed a bit of a sixth sense. I can do something and think that's not what she wants. I'm not listening back to it sort of maybe like that's that sort of in a really practical sense i think in a in a more in a in a less practical sense than um performing i think you do develop that with yes. people yeah. that you play with a lot and singing particularly i think yeah yeah i think i think when the performance element is brought in it you kind of almost when you record in something in the studio ideally you would be in that kind of in-between space but because you you know in the back of your mind you were always aware that that this is like you know 
the red light is on, this is committed forever. So you have to sort of split yourself a little bit between, you know, creating the best performance but not actually losing the soul from from that which you are um, uh, trying to capture. Whereas once something's committed to record, it's almost like you can let go of that a little bit and then move into the flow a lot more of, of you know, what you're trying to express, mm -hmm. which kind of goes into that soul space for me, you know. I think um, Chris Johnson talks about it as being like that grey area, it's kind of the in-between where you sort of almost forget what you're singing about and what you're doing and you're sort of moving into your, you know, more ethereal version of yourself, I suppose, and ideally you'd be tapping into that more and more um, as a musician mm -hmm. and you know there's a space in the middle where you both meet so um yeah great question tony white thank you and is there anybody else that we have missed i think i yeah yeah even even this is okay, this is on a completely good. different network as well so it's um i look forward to christmas this <laughs> does it look like you might be looking forward to christmas <laughs> Um, I am, I am uh, looking forward to Christmas and um, I think, you know, uh, uh, spending some time with my parents as well, um, I missed out on seeing them quite a lot last year as many people will have done with their, um, you know, all the lockdowns we went through and last year we... Uh, me and the boys went over to my parents' garden and sat with some blankets and fan heaters on outside of their patio door. They sat inside the patio, uh, inside the um, dining room with the French windows and we sat just outside. And that was fun and we made it, you know, like a really lovely day. But, you know, I, I always like to sort of have people here and host Christmas gatherings here. So, fingers crossed, it might be nice to be able to do that again. What about you, Mrs Gordon? Yeah. yeah, yeah, really looking forward to it. I didn't play any live music last year, mm -hmm. not with anyone else anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got some gigs this year, which is really lovely, and that sort of runs into it nicely. It gets me out of all sorts of cooking and house decorating obligations, <laughs> so that's brilliant, because last year I had to do everything. Oh. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, I was really lucky that the family that I would normally spend Christmas with, I was with last year, I was locked down with my guys, mm -hmm. so that was good. But um, and we were able, we were in a bubble with the other um, members of the family that we sort of visit traditionally on Boxing Day and stuff. So last year, I, th I feel very grateful that I was not as affected by it as some other people. And we had um, we created a nice outdoor space so that w when the rule of six, after the sort of main Christmas period and the rule of six came into effect. We were able to have some um, little gatherings outside um, with the fire fire pit and stuff, and that that was really special. And um, you know, the human brain has an amazing capacity for you know colouring things, um, the rose tinted glasses. And I remember it being brilliant, and, yeah. and that was lovely. And I, and this year, I sort of thought, will we actually sit outside around the fire pit this year when we so can nice. sit inside? Yeah, I was at one because time. Because it was lovely. Uh, fire pit do's and maybe this side will bits. probably stay in indoors this year because oh. it's warmer but it was it was really really um nice to have a it is really nice to have a a more normal um christmas to look forward to and fingers crossed fingers crossed and i mean head was you know looking amazingly organized with this yeah, it's an not illusion. Quite so it's it, you in know, the Gordon household, it's not quite a few lights and garlands. The rest is is still to come. Actually, we're going to do a bit tomorrow um, with the with the boys in the morning. My parents, the boys want my parents to put some bulbs on the tree this year as well, which would be lovely. Um, I was going to ask you. Um, oh yes, your uh, you were talking about gigs. Yes, are your dates? around the 10th 11th more firmed up now did you want to yes so um yeah that was a question from last weekend about that so yes um for those people that are coming to see mostly autumn on the 12th at the crescent club stout boots uh, which is chris johnson from mostly autumn and Hayden o'brien and myself and two of our old friends are doing our irish pub band thing uh, stout boots at the cross keys thank you for that on the uh 
10th, Friday the 10th. It's in New York, in the town, and it'll be a really good night. We've got some really brilliant Irish Christmas songs, Irish flavoured Christmas music, and it's, you know, it's fabulous, it's great fun. So if you haven't seen us before and you're in New York for the Mostly Haunted gig, or any other reason, um, please come and see us. That'll be brilliant. It was such a great night. Um, and so, yes, that kindly leads me on to your thing. Yes. What are you wearing, Heb? Um, well, <laughs> this is my super spangly um, secret sari dress. Uh, um, and it's one of Whitney. Uh, I'll just close that yeah. down a little bit. I don't know if you could see it. Um, and it's uh, Whitney uh, Ribbins um, has a collection of secret sari dresses. And this is one of her. So I think her, her whole collection, actually, is named after uh, Thin Lizzy songs. I hope I've got that right. This one is Dancing in the Moonlight. And um, the reason I'm particularly wanting to tell you about Secret Sari Dresses uh, today is that you can buy Secret Sari Dresses from the, from the eBay store, uh, the Secret Sari Dress eBay store, who are now um, selling Secret Saris on behalf of Secret Projects. And there is, at the moment, 30% off if you are to enter... The code Christmas SP, and I think that's all of the case. But if you're not sure, just head to secretprojects.org and check out um, the Secret Sari links on there, or you can go to the Secret Sari Dress Instagram page and um, just DM them on there and ask for the code. But I think anybody that's signed up to the With Heart email, uh, newsletter, there's a code in there as well. So, uh, yeah great way to help others this Christmas time and I think there's also an incentive still running where you can buy uh, you can sponsor the secret um, the Masks for India campaign uh, instead of sending Christmas cards that was one of the incentives they were running as well so Brilliant. yeah and apart from anything else I can balance the spangliness of the Christmas tree nicely on the side of the table so, um, mm -hmm. Tice has asked, can we cope during these COVID times? I can understand it's very hard with zero gigs. So, fortunately, we're coming out of that period. Hopefully, fingers crossed, touch wood and all the rest. Um, and so, we have coped. Thank you, Tice. We've survived mm -hmm. um, without that through various other means and, and adapting our skill sets. Um, but we have survived with that. And then, do you want to take Tony's question? Well, I'll just um, add to Tice's um, question as well um, yes fortunately um, well for me very fortunately we've just come out of the tour the Wild by Horses tour and um, Hughes Taylor and he's getting another name drop but he being our support band decided that he was going to record his set for a live album that I think is now released as well and he very kindly offered to record our set as well um, which turned out okay and kept me very busy during last year um, mixing that up with Nick Bryan and selecting the tracks for it and working on the artwork with Roger and you guys massively um, uh, helpfully supported that as well so that, that did keep me very busy during that period and a little bit different for me it's like quite an undertaking when I put on a tour because it's all about venue hire and the risk and makes it really difficult for me to be able to sort of project at which point that's going to be safe to do again so um, there aren't any HF gigs planned uh, at the moment but we do, um, this is leading to one of Jennifer Williams questions, I think it was Jennifer Williams questions um, as to whether we plan to tour the Odin Dragonfly and album Tony yeah, has, has asked that and yeah. Uh, yeah so. Hello, Dougie Walsh is there. Right now. <laughs> Hello, Hello, Dougie. Mega. Um, yeah, I mean, absolutely. We would love to. And and again, it's it's one of those other hats that one has to wear. Um, it 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 takes me all my time to sort of put the production of an album in place and the, then the promotion and you know to then start booking gigs. It was just one too many things to juggle all at once so if there are any tour promoters watching or any fans of tasty tour promotion <laughs> skills yeah, booking skills then do get in touch but um yeah i i i think 
the uh, synergy that the pair of us managed to strike when we play live together, I, I can see these songs will evolve again. You know, once we can get yeah. to playing them live again. So, and we're yeah. a, we're a pretty portable unit as well, aren't we? So yes. the, the house concerts thing that we have talked about, and we have, and, yeah. um, you know, little and reasonably last minute performances are much easier for us than they are for, say, full Heather Tinley band. Yes, exactly, and you know, hence why we did put out a post about the possibility of, you know, I don't know how ambitious that is, about doing a, um, like a, a house concert tour, but um, many of you have actually emailed us and yeah, asked you. from various yeah. parts of the world. I know that Alan um, Batten in Germany asked us about gigs in, in, in southern Germany, Bavaria, and there's a couple of other people who have asked about um, shows in the UK as well. So. The reason we haven't got back to you yet is because we're still sort of in the discussion stages of, of what what we need to do. But we've seen those emails and and uh, we'll be back in touch yeah, really definitely. soon. Yeah. <clears throat> and in terms of you know um, the actual album, we're still very much holding out, but we'll have something to send out before Christmas. We've seen a bit of an update from the manufacturer, and I think it's a little bit too soon to to go ahead on on making any official announcement I'd be very happy to tell you when the truck has arrived outside yeah. <laughs> and we, we pulled in boxes hopefully it won't be snowing that day but um, yeah hopefully really soon we will have an update as to the arrival of stock which is getting very very exciting um, is there another um, I think we should perhaps move to one of Jennifer's questions these, by the way, we're really, really excited about the people that have ordered the um, LP bundle are going to get one of these signed prints of the album cover. And it's just tantalising that the albums, are, you know, well, albums generally take so long to produce at the moment. And having these is a real teaser, isn't it? It is. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's so exciting that this is going to be an album. Absolutely. Really, and a beautiful, a beautiful looking um, hopefully beautiful sounding but beautiful looking vinyl as well that we're uh, unique that we're really excited about so yeah indeed it's a teaser well that that is something we can we can talk about because it doesn't directly affect you guys for for quite some time yet but we did get an email from a manufacturer saying that this week uh, coming we should actually receive the test pressings of the vinyl to listen to so we, we need to uh, organize a cozy night with some mulled wine and hot chocolate or whatever and, and stick that on really maybe exciting. at your house for that mm. one and we will have a listen through and uh, yeah, for yeah see what the vinyl sounds like mm. um jenny has asked here uh how do you okay let's come back to irene that looks like a great question um i get a sense that you are both good friends and that you were Friends before the music was born. Do you think this makes it easier or more difficult musically versus writing with people you don't know so well? Um, it's interesting, isn't it? Because there's when you have a, a, a close connection with somebody, it's not necessarily that aspect of your relationship or connection that you would be tapping into in order to create together. So you would almost need to sort of Park that part of yourself a little bit, and and but you know, don't get me wrong. That's like part of the synergy of, of being co-creative. In really together. practical terms, we've had rehearsals where we've just chatted about the kids and <laughs> life and everything, and then in half an hour, done you know, brilliant work. But <laughs> actually, three hours of putting the world to rights first. So you have to have some discipline, and if you know the person that you're working with, you both have to just disciplined in the Absolutely. same way and I think you probably there's an etiquette and a, and a, a sort of um, what, what am I thinking what's the word I'm thinking of there's a process that you would go through with a writer that you weren't so familiar with I think the term really there is familiar so if you're familiar with someone you um, have an informality whereas there's a formality to uh, to working with someone who you don't yet know no doubt working with them will will make you you know get to know each other better 
but um, yeah, we've had to learn some discipline over the years, haven't we? We have for those reasons <laughs> yeah. because you know when when you um, when, when mm-hmm. you when you're working with somebody entirely new, there's obviously part of that barrier that you have to break down and you have to arrive at like a comfortable space mm-hmm. in order to connect. But they can go too much the other way, mm-hmm. like Angie's saying. And actually, your your um, you introduced me to a really good technique. I don't know if it's like a classical field technique of when something comes up in the middle of um, uh, you know thought will pop into your mind completely unrelated to the music mm-hmm. is just to have a little pad and scribble it down yeah, next to you whilst you <laughs> it's from Louisa Creed the flute oh. ensemble because I've been in other ensembles again with friends and it didn't happen so much before we became friends but when once we've become friends that um Oh, sorry, turn, I, I think maybe turn the mic up a little bit. Um, when, once we became we friends, um, there is a temptation to go, oh, and then the other day this thing happened, oh. and you just do have to adopt a bit of discipline and go, must tell Heather about that thing, and just make a little jot of it. And then when you stop for a cup of tea, you have it there, and you can prompt yourself to go, oh, I'm going to tell you about this. That's yeah. a, a good discipline to have. It's a really good discipline, yeah. And I, and I think as well... Um, you know, working with, you know, if if you have time blocked out in a studio as well, like when it comes to recording, you know, that's a little bit easier because you're not at home, you're not in your familiar environment and you have your set, you know, breakfast happens at this time and then in the evening we do this and we wind down and we, we listen to mixes after we've been for dinner. So it's about, again, like adopting a routine into your creative process that adds that structure and discipline to what you know you're already really good at which is chatting yeah Nonsense. and i do sometimes try to adopt the dinner party principle which is this is like maybe a thing for other people but i call it the dinner party principle which is when you're organizing a rehearsal say like i did for example with a band the other night so what time's rehearsal on thursday seven o'clock for a seven thirty start which you might say for dinner you know come at eight for for sitting down at nine that way you can sort of think we've got half an hour of making tea, chatting, tuning up and start playing at half at seven. And that mm. just, like, it never happens. It didn't happen on Thursday. But it's a nice idea to sort of try and move things on a little bit, when, especially this time of year when you've invariably got a lot on and you've got a lot to cover in the short space of time. Mm. So, yeah, there are techniques that you can adopt. And they will, Having you know, Guinness at the end of the set list. Yeah. You know, when you <laughs> yeah. think there's a reward, you can have your Guinness after that. Yeah. yeah, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, it's a wine and Guinness. I can't see the whole whole message. Uh, well, um, you, did you see it? Is Thor it in Iceland in, from Reykjavik. Thank you, Thor, for letting us know that the sound level was a bit low. I think it, possibly the mic got knocked a little bit. Hopefully, that's a little bit better now. What was the mention of mulled wine and Guinness? Oh, it was just. Just Dougie, the, uh, oh, Dougie yeah. Mega saying, mulled wine and Guinness. I think yeah. he's just having an yeah. excited moment. But okay. he, he is asking, on the album, on the new album, is there one standout track where you think to yourself, this is mega, in my opinion. Uh, the first album, Magnolia Half Moon. I agree. Class. I I agree. I think Magnolia Half Moon is a standout track on offerings. What's your standout track on Sirens? I your flute solo in Magnolia Half Moon as well. Uh, standout track on Sirens. You know mine. Standout track on Sirens. They're, they're mm, interesting. <laughs> they're, they're all sort of, you know, that it's that Quality Street thing that Odin and Dragonfly do, which actually, the front cover of Offerings looks a lot like a little tub of upturned <laughs> Quality Street. And yeah. um, they're all quite different, but they have this sort of um, theme to them. Um, I. I for me, I'm going to say, and it changes, mm-hmm. and I'm not actually listening to it a lot at the moment because I need to sort of distance myself a little bit from the hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours spent listening to it mm-hmm. or for the rest of this year. But um, Beneath Your Armour, I think I briefly mentioned in the last um, live chat, I think probably because it was like um, quite a pivotal point for me, it... Um, creating that song was quite a challenge and you know it sort of started off life very similarly being you know like a magnolia half moon um heartbreak kind of song which you know they all have their place and and i want to reiterate you know i've 
brought myself up on heartbreak songs. In fact, I had a terrible habit of um, whenever I would get a new album, I would literally skip to find the the gut wrenching, heartbreaking ballads and get used to them and love them up before hearing the rest of the album. And it's just just part of who I am, you know. I was sort of very feely and and um, but I wanted to sort of move on from that a little bit with with beneath your armor and. Um, it's it's turned into a song more about helping somebody else go through um, that situation rather than banging on about, about your own heartbreak. But what, something that is one of my extremely favourite things about that song is that we've had a a, a a bit of a joke to ourselves over the years that that when I write a um, a song that has a high-ish <laughs> chorus anyway then Angie has to get on top of the the melody that I've written and, and do the Richie Sambora part so we, we're very very John and Richie in Beneath yeah. Your Armour Chorus the, the, the interval of the harmony is very sort of yeah. never say goodbye-ish yeah. um, but but um, yeah we won't say too much more but they, they change you know every single time I hear Across the Sea uh, I'm just yeah I adore that song as well it's the second track on the album and one of your oldest tracks on, yeah. on probably the first song I wrote actually song wow. song yeah wow yeah when just I first gorgeous. moved to York I met you guys and, and, and was inspired by yeah, Miss Fabulon yeah. yeah cool and you yeah. introduced me to Miss Fabulon yeah and my friend Vic my uh, my dear 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 friend Vic introduced me to the Miss Avalon, or I introduced you know, she introduced me to Miss Avalon. I think she's watching. If you're watching, look after yourself. Oh. First. Um, but um, yeah, so across the sea, yeah. Uh, but my favourite track on the album, just if you have to pick a favourite track, Desert Island Discs off Sirens stuff um, is uh, Gulls. I think still, it's just still brilliant. <laughs> but you know, there's a song that I've written on there for Scarlet. Um, that's that's no secret. I've talked about that before. And people probably, um, if you heard us at Cambridge uh, Rock Festival a couple of years ago, played it there. Um, that's like, you know, really uh, personal. And one of those weird songs where it just becomes more poignant. The lyrics become more poignant as time passes. Um, it's about a little girl who's 14 next week. And I think when I first wrote that, started writing that, she was maybe, what, eight? Wow. Seven or eight, maybe. Um, and it's like I wrote it yesterday when I hear the words now in terms of how it applies to the young woman she's becoming getting myself all choked up but yeah um, there's loads of moments on it but it's um, like that you say is different such a universal appeal as well it, it's it's such a beautiful song and I, I all the time whilst we were sort of mixing um, the album that it kept striking me that Fall From The Stars has such an Elton John feel about it and that's a massive you know like that I wish I had written a song that sounds like it could have been written by Elton John and Bernie Taupin but it, it's such a beautiful like somewhere between Christine McVie Fleetwood Mac and, and um, Elton John like I'll early Madman Across the Water sort of Brilliant. tiny dancer and, that for compliment. yeah well yeah. no it's your song yeah. <laughs> And um, I actually found some old set lists about uh, um, notes from when we were first working on that song together. <laughs> and I'd written Elton John it up, Elton John it up. <laughs> yeah. on this, uh, yeah, on my lyric yeah. sheet. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there you go. And I just had a thought that we might need to look at the time. I believe it was it about five two. This is this is a classic eight. example so, of what happens. When yeah, this is what chatting. happens when you. But yeah, we've learned to. I'm actually wearing a watch, which is okay. something I rarely do. That's amazing. But, um, Thank yeah. you for um, bearing with us with the technical issues. I think it probably righted itself towards I think the end. It did. Um, and we'll get that sorted for next time. And um, it's been brilliant. I don't know how many people were watching. I mean, how many people are watching? Uh, I don't Can know. Can somebody just put in the chat how many people are watching? We're trying to keep off the internet so that we I, don't. I have a feeling that, that, that needs so. to refresh because it's still saying one minute ago, actually. So uh, we, we okay. might have had. Some more questions. I'll just see Let's really quickly. Fifteen comments I can Do see. Uh, we said we'll restart. Hello, Sharon and Kevin. Dropping in and out. That might be the uh, that might be the old one. Oh yeah, that's live chat too. Live chat was the one. Comments. 
Let's have a look. Thank you for, anyway, thank you everybody for um, checking in with us. And check in next time and we might have um, some exciting news about the uh, actual, actual CDs next time. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, keep keep your eye on our um, social media, uh, the, the Facebook and the Instagram pages. And also, uh, we were asking if you might help us by subscribing to our YouTube channel. And simply because we can then make it uh, youtube.com forward slash Odin Dragonfly, which would be really nice, but you can't do that until you've got 100 subscribers, because oh. we're baby YouTubers right now, so we need your help. Um, and there's a very good reason we're asking you to do that, so you should probably stay tuned, because we've got still got surprises for you before the album is released. And I'm so excited to talk about one particular surprise that's just been making my year yeah <laughs> <laughs> actually it's doesn't even know it's uh, yeah we, we definitely have uh, some more surprises up our sleeves it must be the Guinness the most right what's time. The, it, must be. it must be what's the date of the um, next one the date of the next one it's not going to be on Saturday it's on Wednesday the 15th of December. Yes. So we will uh, we'll make another post for you in another event, and hopefully, uh, yeah, TJ is going to be there's me a few people See, up in York for the tenth and twelfth definitely. Maybe something will happen on the eleventh somewhere. Yeah. Uh, in York for the Christmasness. Yeah. And just one more thing, I've just thought of another song that I would dearly love to cover. Maybe two, and um, they're ones that you might already be aware of because we've already played them before. One of them is Famous Blue Raincoat. Oh, yeah, we have done that. Nice. By Leonard Cohen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we sort of took on Jennifer Warren's beautiful yeah. version of that. And yeah, yeah. that was always a really, really gorgeous really song to do live. Yeah. And Sirens of the Sea by the Above and Beyond. Which was nearly Man. on the album. It was nearly on the we album. About that last and of course, <laughs> Hughes Taylor's Great Shred. Expectations. <laughs> yeah. We'll do that at some yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Lisa, for subscribing. That's thank funny. you, Lisa. Cheers. Yes, I saw a flurry of you. Thank you very much for helping us That's out. Brilliant. And thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, if anybody's looking for a gift for somebody, all you chaps, maybe your missuses, or maybe you want a sarong. For, for, um, Liam was always always <laughs> one for sporting a sarong, wasn't he? Yeah, our clothes regularly went missing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not afraid of wearing Not them just to Liam, though. Johnny Blackman as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've got we've, the, the Uriah Heat ladies in uh, women, woman in black. Yeah. Where we all... Oh, look, Essa's even shared it for you now. That's fantastic. Oh, thank you, Essa. Yes, anyway, we're beginning to waffle, so thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for persevering with our technical issues. Um, we promise to uh, get those sorted for you for Brilliant. next time. Thank Robert you. Mitchell, thank and you very be much. Be safe in this stormy weather. Yes, and have fun if you can. If you get loads of snow, just uh, have fun in it and send us some pictures. Yeah. Brilliant. All right. Take care, Thanks everybody. Bye-bye for Bye. now. See you on the 15th, hopefully. Mm -hmm.